Hi everybody, I'm Andy and I'm here with Maria and today we're going to be analysing text in Disneyland reviews. Yeah, so today we're going to be using a data set with around 42k rows um, about Disneyland and some of the variables that we have here will be the rating that people give to those um, parks and the different branches that we have that will be Disneyland Hong Kong, Disneyland Paris and Disneyland California and then one column with the text review. Exactly, and we have other columns with the location of the reviewer and the year or, or the date that uh, the review was written, but they're not gonna be as relevant for us today. So what we wanna do is we wanna um, bring up the data set in GraphX and go to the text analysis type. So text analysis, we have five different sub analysis types, topics, keywords, word co-occurrence, te multiple text fields, and predict topics. Uh, we're gonna focus on topics today, but um, it's nice to know that if you have multiple text fields in your data set, then you can use this analysis type. Or if you wanna focus a little bit more precisely on the features of verbs or, or nouns or language features in your data set, then you can use the keywords analysis flow. So if we bring up topics and I click next, excuse me, I was peering over my laptop. It's gonna bring us up to uh, the, the uh, project setup window. So automatically graphics is quite smart and it's able to, to uh, program the steps involved in your analysis kind of without having to ask you many, many questions. So uh, topic analysis is quite good like that, but let's just take uh, a look at what's going on here. So if we bring up the data extraction uh, window, which is probably the most important for us here, we can see that GraphX has automatically uh, recognized the review text column. So uh, this is the text that we're gonna analyze. Now, if we had multiple, um, multiple columns that were text fields in the data set, we could open this up and we could see from the drop-down list that there would be another column we could choose which column we wanted to analyze. Mm -hmm. uh, and the next, uh, window is telling us about the information that we're going to be extracting from the text. So there's, um, these are essentially steps that we, the, the graphics will execute in um, when we build the project, and they are natural language processing algorithms, and uh, they will ex extract the features of the reviews so that we're able to kind of uh, make sense of them a little bit more. So as we can see here, we've got significant terms. We've got sentiment of the text, the keywords, the entities, uh, mentions, emojis, and hashtags, uh, which are probably more suited to social media analysis. So we're gonna take, take them out of our project today. Um, and we also have a column at the bottom here that talks about the keywords that we wanna extract from the text. So we're already gonna be extracting proper nouns, adjectives, and nouns. And perhaps we also wanted to look through these language features and take out verbs as well, then what that means is that all of these uh, items from the, from the review are gonna be extracted and placed as a new variable that we can understand and look at inside the project. Yeah, so that should be it, right? That's pretty much it. And to be honest with you, Maria, that was mostly calculated by GraphX uh, automatically. So I only needed to add in verbs that was the only thing that i that i actually did there and of, of course removed some unnecessary language features that's great that's great um i also see some filtering options there at the top exactly so today we're working with quite a large data set of reviews uh, almost fifty thousand. so that can take a little bit longer whether you're working with graphx or without graphx uh, maybe using a notebook or python to analyze reviews uh, is, is going to take a lot longer the more reviews you have. So if you're confident that you're, you can have a representative sample, then you can click this button at the top. And if I choose 50% here, the size of the data set that will uh, be pushed into our project that we'll be analyzing in our project is going to be cut in half, basically. Uh, so that's quite a nice way of kind of reducing the time taken to build the project um, and still kind of having a look at some of the insights that you would get from analyzing reviews. Um, but that's not what we're gonna do today. I think it's also worth pay, uh, drawing attention to the filtering option. So I should have mentioned that this is random sampling. So if we selected 50% here, then that's gonna be a random sample. 
However, if we select the filtering option, we can choose according to certain criteria. So I can add a date filter uh, to include only reviews that have been written after May 1st of 2021, for example. Mm -hmm. So that means that the only reviews that will be included in my final project are reviews that have been uh, written after May 2021. But again, today we're going to be looking at the full data set, so we're not yeah. actually going to be including any of that. Okay. So yeah, that should be it. We should click next now and give it a title. Exactly. I think analyzing Disneyland reviews suits quite nicely today. Yeah, and then click on execute and exactly. we'll have our project. And this is what you will see. So you can go to your projects panel uh, of the team that you built your project in and this is going to be ready in between 10 and 20 minutes approximately. So Maria, maybe you want to talk us through exactly what we see here. Yeah, see, so here we have different clusters that have been created around different topics that we have in the reviews, as we can see here in the cluster area. We see that there are some significant terms in each cluster. And then we have here the significant terms area where we can see them as a list and as a chart also. Exactly. And what's really nice about uh, natural language processing with GraphX is that remember those uh, key language features that we were extracting when we built the project, they've now appeared as variables in our data set. So alongside the six, I think it was six original variables that we had in the data set, we've now got 24. So we've got the rating branch, uh, the review text, um, but also on top of these, we have entities like products, people, locations, events that have been extracted from the, the reviews and are now featuring as variables in the data set, which is really, really useful because we're now able to see, um, like for example, people. I think uh, it's quite interesting that the people that is recognized are, are Disney characters actually. Uh, but these are these the reviews that talk about Mickey, we assume that's Mickey Mouse. Uh, we can tie this in with particular branches. So if I select Disneyland California, and this is going to restrict the data uh, presented in, in GraphX to uh, reviews that were about Disneyland California, and everything updates in the variable chart. So we can see the gray bar is representing um, everything in the data set, so the distribution of values normally, and the blue bar is now set to relative representation, and it shows us um, the, the distribution of values just within our selection, so just uh, related to Disneyland California. And we can see immediately that Mickey Mouse um, was less spoken about in reviews related to Disneyland California than the rest of the data set. That's very interesting, very interesting. Um, so why don't we go and click on a specific cluster and see what happens? That is a good idea. So uh, I'll click on this blue cluster here. And we can see immediately these four terms that have appeared are meal, drink, hotel, and water. And they're reflected in the first, most foremost uh, significant terms in reviews of this cluster. So meal, drink, hotel, and water. Um, you can see they're the same. Now, if we look through the rest of the significant terms, I'm just going to make sure this is sorted by our selection. Uh, then we can also see food, expensive, place, good. In fact, I think I would just sort by TF, IDF. Uh, it's, this is term frequency, inverse document frequency, which shows us um, that graphics has calculated the terms that were appearing in this column um, that were perhaps not as uh, common in the whole data set. So that's brought up uh, meal, drink, hotel, breakfast. And are you seeing anything that perhaps acts as a bit of a general category here, Maria? Yeah, this, this is definitely hospitality. Yeah, it seems like it. We've got burger, dinner, lunch, expensive. So one thing we might want to do now, uh, just to make it a little bit clearer, is rename this cluster. 
So I can edit the properties of the cluster, take away the text, uh, we've already selected the cluster, and maybe I can rename it hospitality. So clicking OK, that's going to uh, save that. And I save the changes that I've made. Excuse me, sorry. And we can see already it's uh, it's appeared as a label in the data in in the graph, which is making it a lot clearer to for us to recognise what these reviews are about. Yeah. Um. Other thing that I would in is comparing the different branches. Okay, that sounds interesting. So let's head over to the compare panel to do that. Um, so if I bring up branches as the variable that I want to compare here, and I add in values not only for Disneyland California, but also for Disneyland uh, Paris and Disneyland Hong Kong, then GraphX is going to generate me a series of charts uh, that show the difference. Automatically, we can get the difference between uh, values belonging to Disneyland California, Paris, and Hong Kong. So these charts um, show the distribution of values from other variables in the data set. And is anything catching your eye immediately here, Maria, is being significant? Yeah, uh, something that is drawing my attention is how Disneyland California has more five stars reviews than the others. Yeah, that rating variable seems to be pretty relevant. Um, we can see this blue line, which is representing Disneyland California, is is spiking right at the end there. So we can see um, there's plenty of five star reviews about Disneyland California. And one thing that's also interesting to me is the cluster. So we can see hospitality, um, as we saw originally from our analysis, um, is more related to Disneyland Paris. So uh, reviews about Disneyland Paris uh, tend to be weighted towards um, hospitality, whereas California doesn't experience as many reviews about hospitality. Um, and just before we finish, I wanted to draw a little bit of attention towards the language features in the data set here. So we can actually still comparing the branches mm -hmm. and we can have a look at the nouns, the adjectives, the proper nouns. So even seeing here, we can have a look at the adjectives that were used to describe reviews about the three branches and how they are distributed amongst uh, values belonging to those branches. So it seems like small was much more frequently used in uh, reviews relating to Disneyland Hong Kong than it was compared with Disneyland Paris and California. And interestingly as well, expensive, this is Disneyland Paris, seems to be uh, experiencing more reviews that are uh, labelling the word expensive, mm -hmm. which could be quite an interesting insight. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that should be it for today. Um, as a former employee from Disneyland, I think it will be very, very interesting for Disneyland with the managers um, just to understand a little bit more what's working, what's not working, and see, for example, as we have seen here, what's perceived as expensive or not good enough, or maybe customer service is not really working. So I think this is a very interesting um, review. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us today and we'll see you for our next video. Bye.